Welcome back to Ezizi Africa. Today's story is one for the history books. Mali's recent arrest of the CEO of a billion-dollar gold mining company, an action that has shocked the global mining industry. But this isn't just about one arrest. It's about Africa fighting for its wealth, reclaiming what's rightfully its own, and stepping up against exploitative agreements. This could mark a pivotal shift in how African nations manage and benefit from their natural resources. Now, here's the big question that has everyone talking. Why should Mali, a nation blessed with immense mineral wealth, receive as little as 15% of the profits from its own resources, while foreign companies walk away with up to 85%? If this sounds unfair, that's because it is. But it's not just Mali facing this issue. Across the Sahel, specifically in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, a new wave of military-led governments is fighting back to reclaim control over their natural resources. This movement isn't just an economic battle, it's a battle for justice and sovereignty. So what's really happening in Mali and across the Sahel? What's driving this bold stand against foreign mining corporations? And what does this mean for Africa's future? Let's get into it. Why only 15% for Africa's resources? Let's start with the core question that everyone's asking. Why should Mali, Burkina Faso, or Niger receive only 15-20% of the profits from their own natural resources? Imagine this. You're sitting on vast reserves of gold, uranium, oil, and other valuable minerals. But the profit goes elsewhere. Imagine the wealth that could be used for schools, hospitals, roads, and infrastructure instead ending up in the hands of foreign shareholders. Before we continue, just a gentle reminder to like and share our videos. Also, subscribe to the channel to stay informed on the latest African economic, political, and social developments and explore how global geopolitics impact the continent. Now let's continue. It doesn't make sense, does it? Yet this is exactly what's happening. Companies like Canada's Barrick Gold and Australia's Resolute Mining have been profiting enormously from African resources while the host nations are left with a tiny fraction of the wealth. This economic imbalance is what Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger are challenging. These countries are saying, no more, and they're taking bold steps to ensure that their natural wealth serves their people, not just foreign corporations. A new leadership stands up. This new economic resistance is being led by the military governments in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. Unlike many of their predecessors, these leaders have prioritized national sovereignty over pleasing foreign investors. They're questioning the deals signed by past governments, deals that left their countries with a mere fraction of the wealth they deserve. These leaders are standing up to renegotiate these contracts, hold corporations accountable, and put the wealth of their nations back into the hands of their people. The arrest of Resolute Mining CEO in Mali is a powerful example of this new stance. The CEO, Terence Hollohan, along with two other executives, was detained while in the country for negotiations over a tax dispute. This move has sent shockwaves through the mining industry, and it's a clear message that Mali will no longer accept unfair deals. If foreign corporations want access to Africa's resources, they need to play fair. Resolute Mining isn't the only company feeling the pressure. Canada's Barrick Gold, the second largest gold mining company in the world, has also been targeted. Earlier this year, Mali's government arrested several of Barrick's executives and is demanding nearly $500 million in unpaid taxes. In response, Barrick's CEO, Mark Bristow, offered to raise Mali's share of the profits from 15% to 55%. Let that sink in, 55%. If Barrick can suddenly offer Mali a 55% share, it shows just how much African nations have been losing under these exploitative agreements. This isn't just about enforcing laws, it's about fundamentally changing exploitative economic arrangements. Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger are leading a movement to reclaim control of their resources, and the entire world is taking notice. What are they really worth? To understand why this is so important, let's talk about what Africa's resources are actually worth. Africa is home to some of the richest mineral deposits on Earth, from gold, uranium, and oil to diamonds, cobalt, and rare earth minerals, the continent is packed with natural wealth. 
Take Mali, which holds significant gold reserves, or Niger, which has some of the world's largest uranium deposits, or Burkina Faso, another major gold-producing country. Imagine if these resources were processed locally rather than being exported as raw materials. What if instead of just mining gold, Mali was refining it and creating value-added products that could be sold globally? This would drastically increase the economic value of these resources and bring more money into local economies. Let's consider uranium in Niger. This mineral is essential for nuclear energy, and France alone has relied on Niger's uranium to power its nuclear plants for decades. Yet despite this critical role, Niger has seen little of the wealth generated from its uranium. If Niger were to take control of its uranium resources, set fair prices, and possibly process uranium domestically, the nation's wealth could skyrocket. It's estimated that if African countries were to fully control and process their resources, they could add trillions of dollars to their economies. This wealth could fund infrastructure, healthcare, education, and more, transforming the lives of millions of people. Africa doesn't have to look far for examples of how taking control of natural resources can lead to prosperity. Botswana is a prime example. The country renegotiated its diamond mining agreements, ensuring that a significant portion of the profits stayed in the country. Today, Botswana has one of the highest GDPs per capita in Africa, and the revenue from diamonds has been used to build infrastructure, schools, and healthcare facilities. South Africa also serves as a model in some respects. While there is still much work to be done, South Africa has established local beneficiation policies, which require that a portion of mined minerals be processed within the country. This has helped create jobs and boost the economy. Even outside Africa, countries like Norway have taken control of their natural resources to benefit their people. Norway's state-owned oil fund ensures that oil revenues benefit the entire population. If African countries were to adopt similar models, they could retain much more of their wealth. The solution to Africa's resource exploitation isn't just renegotiating deals. It's about building the infrastructure to process raw materials locally. Here are some steps African nations could take to maximize the value of their resources. Invest in processing facilities. By investing in facilities to process minerals domestically, African countries can add value to their raw materials before they're sold on the global market. Instead of exporting raw gold, for example, countries like Mali could refine and shape it into products that sell for higher prices. Build regional partnerships. Countries in the Sahel could form regional partnerships to share resources, technology, and expertise in mineral processing. By working together, these nations can achieve economies of scale, reduce costs, and compete more effectively on the global stage. Train local workforce. A skilled workforce is essential for building a sustainable extraction and processing industry. African countries could establish training programs and partnerships with educational institutions to ensure that local workers have the skills needed to manage and operate processing facilities. Encourage local ownership. African governments can encourage local ownership of mining companies and other businesses in the extraction and processing industries. This would ensure that more of the wealth generated from natural resources remains within African communities. Create sovereign wealth funds. Like Norway's oil fund, African nations could establish sovereign wealth funds to manage and invest the revenue generated from natural resources. These funds could be used to finance infrastructure projects, healthcare, and education, ensuring that natural resource wealth benefits current and future generations. By following these steps, African nations can not only increase their wealth, but also take control of their own economic destiny. The recent arrests in Mali and the ongoing efforts in Burkina Faso and Niger are part of a larger movement for economic sovereignty. These leaders are challenging the status quo, demanding that their nation's wealth serves their people first. They're not anti-foreign investment, they're pro-fair investment. They're standing up to ensure that Africa's natural resources are used to build a better future for Africans. And here's the question for all of you watching. Do you think other African countries will follow the Sahel's example? 
Will we see a wave of African nations demanding fairer terms, building local processing industries, and reclaiming their economic futures? Share your thoughts in the comments. The global impact of Africa's economic resistance. The actions taken by Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger are already having a ripple effect on the global mining industry. Companies are realizing that Africa is no longer a passive participant in its own exploitation. They're seeing that African nations are willing to enforce their laws, renegotiate contracts, and prioritize the welfare of their people. If this movement continues, it could reshape Africa's place in the global economy. No longer would Africa be seen as just a source of raw materials. Instead, it would be a continent of thriving industries, innovation, and economic power. This is a model that other African countries and developing nations around the world can follow. By taking control of their natural resources, building local industries, and prioritizing the welfare of their people, these nations can break free from the cycle of exploitation and chart a new course for prosperity. In conclusion, Mali's arrest of Resolute Mining's CEO is more than a headline. It's a symbol of Africa's fight for justice and economic independence. The Sahelian leaders are showing courage and determination, standing up for what is rightfully theirs. This is about much more than one mining company. It's about a continent reclaiming its resources, its wealth, and its future. To all our viewers, the story doesn't end here. Africa's path to prosperity is just beginning, and we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the actions taken by Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger? Do you think this movement will spread across Africa? And what steps do you think African nations should take to ensure they fully benefit from their natural resources? Thank you for tuning in to Izizi Africa. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Africa's economic resistance, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next episode. Let's keep the conversation going as we witness a new chapter in Africa's story. Remember, Africa's wealth belongs to Africans, and it's time we take control of our destiny. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and letting me break down these complex geopolitical topics. Let me know what you think about the issues down in the comments below. Looking forward to that discussion. Please like this video, share it, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in our next video.